Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be, they wanted to turn you into them. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please subscribe. So I'll jump right into it. The narcissist, they wanted to turn you into them. And you may think that that's not true. Well, I will give you many illustrations of it being absolutely true. I'll jump into that right now. The body of the relationship with the narcissist was unlike anything, any relationship you've ever been a part of because you experienced poor behavior by the narcissist. You tolerated poor behavior from the narcissist. You found yourself in precarious situations that you never thought you would be in. You found yourself putting out fires to appease the narcissist. You found yourself running around with the endless to-do list each and every day that list would get longer and longer and longer. And each and every day, the narcissist would invalidate you more and more and more or devalue you, whichever you want to say. But this relationship from the ending of the euphoric stage or the ending of the, when everything was all puppies and rainbow stage, maybe that lasted a few weeks, a few months, maybe a half year. But whenever that ended and you professed your love to the narcissist or you moved in with them or you relocated cities, towns, countries, states, wherever, or you loaned them money or had kids or got married or created a business, whatever, any of or all of these things that you did, that's when the narcissist knew they had you. And that's when they began to slowly, insidiously devalue you. And they kept you stuck in that trance-like, zombie-like state, the narcissistic fog, where you are trying to get back to the euphoric stage. You're trying to get back to the days when everything was, everything was unicorns and rainbows. Remember, that was just part of the facade. That was part of the mask that the narcissist wears to get you to do what they want you to do in the beginning of the relationship, then enter devaluation stage. And then most likely you were either discarded or you ended the relationship yourself. But either way, those are the three main parts of the narcissistic relationship. And the Hoover is the fourth part. I won't get into that during this video. My point is, is the narcissist wanted you to become, they, they wanted to turn you into them. And here's how, first of all, the narcissist wanted to take your identity from you and they succeeded for a period of time until you found my channel until you got the wisdom and you had your first light bulb moment and you realized oh my goodness my identity was taken and when I say that I don't say it lightly what I mean is you found yourself not being around the support system that you were accustomed to being because maybe you relocated or maybe the narcissist planted so many seeds in your head that you turned against your own family or you doubted your friends or you doubted anybody in your support system or perhaps the narcissist planted seeds that your job, you weren't making enough money, you needed to make more money. And then when you quit your job, you couldn't get a job, now you were stuck. Or you quit your job, you got a different job, you didn't like the job, and you weren't making more money. The point is the narcissist does not want you being you. They want you being like them and or they want you being something that they have molded in for you to become. Play that again. So why the narcissist wanted you to become like them? What they were doing throughout the whole relationship is they were testing your supply source, your tank of supply, meaning your empathy, your time, your money, your energy, your love, how much you would tolerate of their poor behavior throughout the relationship. That's exactly what they were doing. Testing how much you would tolerate. And this is a no-win situation when you are in the relationship with the narcissist because number one, they don't care about you as a human being. You need to get that message. I created that video yesterday or the day before. But number two, all they care about is what you supply for them, what you provide for them, what you do for them. Are you the errand boy, the pool boy, the chauffeur, the person who plans vacations, the person who pays the mortgage, the person who pays tuition, the person who makes them look good, the person who gets them from point A to point B, the person who is the sounding board, the person who is there for them during a beck and call, no matter what time of day or night they needed you, you were available. Think about it, that's what you did. And they knew that. And they were watching you de decline. They were watching your health take a hit. They were definitely watching your financial resources take a hit. They were watching you fall apart right in front of their eyes. Now, you didn't really see yourself as falling apart. You just probably thought, oh, I can make more money or my health, that's no big thing. I, I only saw the doctor once in the last 10 years, but I've seen the doctor six times this year, but it's nothing, it's no big thing. Think again, it's a huge thing. There is no such thing as a coincidence on this planet. And remember, if you were in a narcissistic relationship, that wasn't one either. However. Having said that, that was something you had to go through. You had to experience it. It was a lifelong learning lesson. And why your health took a hit, most likely, is because of the weight of you carrying the relationship with the narcissist. In other words, you were doing all of the heavy lifting. All they were doing is jumping on your back and piggybacking you to destruction. That's exactly what they were doing. 
and they knew it. And they were guiding you and steering you into landmines here and there, never circumventing the landmines. They were creating drama and they wanted you to, to face these drama issues head on. In other words, let's say that uh, there's a storm coming, literally a storm, hypothetically. And the narcissist is like, hey, let's go out. Let's go to the store. We have to get some uh, ketchup and mustard. And you're like, but wait a minute. There's a huge storm coming, maybe even flash flooding. Like, why would we get ketchup and mustard? We don't need that. And they're like, no, we need it. Let's go. And you're like, uh, who in their right mind would do this? A narcissist. But the thing is, you didn't have the wisdom back then. So what did you do? You jumped in the car. You drove through the torrential rainstorm to get to the store. And lo and behold, either A, the store was closed because they're smart enough to not be open during that huge, massive storm, or B, you get there and you get the ketchup and mustard, and then on the way home, you get a flat tire or you can't see, and you, maybe you get into a fender bender or something. But either way, the ketchup and mustard, you didn't even need it that day because the barbecue wasn't for another week. But this is what the narcissist wants to do. This is where they want to place you. They want to place you in confusion. They, they want to disrupt your energy. They want you doing little tasks that have no purpose or meaning. They want you to become like them. Now think about this again. If the narcissist, many times, what would they do? Yeah, that's right. They would go out in perhaps not the best weather. They would do some things that you would be scratching your head like, like who, like why would you do that? It doesn't make any sense. Like, I'll tell you why, because they can't sit still and they need disruption and they need to create drama and be a part of drama and they wanted to throw you into that drama pool with them. That's what happened. So another thing, when you are tolerating all the poor behavior, let's say the gaslighting, the stonewalling, the silent treatment, smear campaign, triangulation, all these things, when you rage fits, when you experienced all of these things, you didn't know what you were up against because you did not know what these definitions were. You didn't know what the terms meant. You didn't know that individuals could think this way, let alone behave this way, and let alone play off in the same playbook. That's what they do. Now, how the narcissist becomes a narcissist, that's for a whole different video, but my point is they all use the same playbook. It's just a matter of which page they're gonna flip it to. Is it gonna be page one? Is it gonna be page 21? Is it gonna be page 52? I don't know, but it's all contingent upon where you are in the narcissistic cycle. Are you a person that is being showered with affection? Are you a person who's being devalued? Are you the person that tomorrow is gonna to be discarded? Are you the person that's gonna discard the narcissist? Who knows, but they know exactly which button to press. That's why the path when you're in these relationships is to go no contact, block them, delete them, remove all flying monkeys and people associated with them and just let them drift away in the past. That's the path. But if you can't do that, I understand each and every one of our circumstances are different. Perhaps you can utilize gray rock. Certainly don't share information about yourself to the narcissist or to toxic individuals, but getting back on track, there's an energy exchange here, and I've mentioned this recently frequently on the channel, and I'll mention it again for you newbies or for people who missed this concept. What it is, is the narcissist is a toxic and negative energy-filled individual. And most likely what you are is a positive, abundant, beautiful, bright, shining light. An empath, perhaps. But the point being, the narcissist sized you up. They did their homework all over you, all about you. They did the reconnaissance, if you will. They researched you. They figured out what made you tick. Then they grabbed that one fateful cup of coffee on an afternoon, and, they, and you guys sat down and talked for a couple hours. But what did you do? You were asking questions to the narcissist because let's say this is the first time you met, maybe the second time you met. You were asking them questions. What were they doing? They were deflecting the questions back onto you. So what happened then? Well, three hours pass and you found yourself giving them your whole life story in a nutshell, sharing too much, if you will, oversharing information. The narcissist just gave you vague answers like they usually do and say, oh, we'll talk about it some other time or I don't want to talk about that right now or it, it's complicated. But what about you? Let me hear about you. They say things like that. Next thing you know, then they bide their time. Perhaps they take a few days or a week and they think about everything you shared with them over that three hour cup of coffee on an afternoon. And then what happens? Huh? This one really has a lot I can take from, which was you. And then they contact you and say, hey, let's grab dinner. Do you wanna go out to dinner tomorrow night or tonight? Next thing you know, boom, the dirty fangs are sunken into you. You think that you just hit the jackpot or that this person really wants to be with you. Nothing could be further from the truth. The truth is they had time to process everything and weigh their options because it wasn't just you who was gonna be the next source of supply. They were vetting other individuals other individuals in your city, town, country, on the internet, everywhere. But you happen to be the winner. Why were you the winner? Because most likely you were an empath, but you overshared. And on top of that, they figured out rather quickly, oh, you could be a perfect person to raise the kids. You could be a great person to buy a house. You could be a great person to take me all over the globe. You could be a great person to 
provide for everything for myself and other individuals while I, behind the scenes, create a business and I will use your money to get me, to catapult me from where I am right now, which is nowhere, to where I want to be, which is owning a business. That's exactly what you will do. And the whole time, I will devalue you, but I'll give you little breadcrumbs here and there. Perhaps even I'll marry you, who knows? But what I won't do is I won't show you my authentic, genuine self until it's time to discard you. And that won't happen for years. But in the meantime, I will play the game and I will stay away from you for periods of time on alleged trips and I will be with you for periods of time when it's just the two of us so I can reinforce that trauma bond with you. Yes, that's what I'll do. And I'll do it slowly, insidiously. And when I feel you drifting away, what will I do? Oh, no, 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 I will throw a curveball at you, a little surprise, a little ray of sunshine, a little hope of the euphoric stage, and I'll get you back in line. And then all the time behind the scenes, what will I be doing? What I'll be doing is looking for your replacement, which I now have multiple suitors to be your replacement, but I don't, I'm not gonna pull them out just yet. I'm gonna wait and see what happens with you. This is exactly how the narcissistic abusive cycle goes. But the whole time, what I will be doing is trying to crush you, to decimate you, to have you not believing in yourself, to have you believing that I know more than you, that I have all the answers. I will take your identity. I will have you become an extension of me. I will have you be running all over the town, city, country, doing errands, paying bills. I will keep you off kilter. I will make sure that you have no time to recharge your battery. Your health will take a hit. Your social circle will certainly take a hit. Your hobbies will take a hit. You will be smeared by your next door neighbors. In other words, I will smear you to your next door neighbors. I will smear you to your coworkers. Yes, your coworkers. I will do everything I possibly can to paint a picture that you are not a good individual. And the whole time I'm doing this, I will be getting supply from other sources, whether physically, intimately, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, however, but I will be doing it. Maybe it's business, but I will be getting your replacement lined up. And what will happen then? Well, the person that will be replacing you, I hope you're following me, what they will be doing is they will be so grateful to be in a relationship with me behind the scenes, just waiting to, to take your place, the person watching the video, that they'll do anything I want them to do. And now I have two puppets, two pawns, if you will, you, the person watching the video, and your replacement, i.e. the new supply. And what am I doing? I'm sitting in the back just gobbling this all up. This is amazing. I'm such a master manipulator. I can do anything I want. And you know what? I'm gonna push the envelope a little bit further. What I'm gonna do with you, the person watching the video, I'm really gonna hammer you now. I'm really gonna devalue you. I'm gonna start attending events without you. I'm gonna start stop answering your texts or your replies. I'm gonna really bury you in the narcissistic fog and see how much you can tolerate. And then what will happen? That's right, one day you will stand up for yourself and you will say, hey, what's going on here? Like, you're not even around anymore. Like, like I wake up in the morning and you're gone. I come home at night, you're not home. And you claim that you're here, here, and here. What? I don't know where you are. You don't even answer my texts. You don't communicate. What's going on? And then they say, you're so insecure. Don't be such a baby. It's no big deal. Well, what do you care where I am? What's the big, what's the problem? Everyone else does this. What's the thing? I, I knew I shouldn't have married you, et cetera, like that. And the next thing you know, boom, discarded. That's it. You're done. Why are you done? I'll tell you why. Because over the body of the relationship, the narcissist tried to turn you into them. And that one fateful night, you stood up for yourself and most likely you experienced reactive abuse and you did turn into them for a period of time. Maybe it was for two minutes, maybe it was for 20 minutes, maybe it was for a whole night, who knows? But the weight of that relationship became so cumbersome that you actually had to stand up for yourself. And when the narcissist wouldn't budge, what did you do? You said, no, this is not happening. I'm gonna put up a boundary. Either you are gonna be present in the relationship or this isn't gonna work out. Next day, there's the moving van, boom, discard happens and now you are left isolated in your own house and you don't know what's going on because why because you don't know what the narcissistic abusive cycle is you didn't know a person was capable of this you thought a marriage was about give and take about working towards the same directions goals dreams aspirations when you marry a narcissist or are in any narcissistic relationship nothing can be further from the truth the truth is all they want to do is make you like them they want to consume you. They want your beautiful, bright energy into them and they want to inject all of their negativity, their toxicity into you. And that is exactly what happens each and every day in a narcissistic relationship. And it's not until the dust has settled and you finally find that needle in a haystack, you find my channel post-relationship when you're trying to put yourself back together and you say, oh my gosh, that's what this was? Are you kidding me? These people exist? It's not just a person. A narcissist isn't just a person that likes to look at themselves in the mirror. Uh, no, that's just one tiny little piece of it. They do love mirrors, by the way. Believe me, they love mirrors. 
But the point being is that's not it. They, they need people to make themselves feel good about themselves. And you were one of those people for a period of time. And now they have a new supply or new supplies, or maybe they've been married for the third, fourth, fifth time now, who knows? But what we do know is the narcissist can't change and they do their best to have that energetic exchange, if you will, to, to inject their toxic negativity into you and perhaps turn you into a full-time narcissist or certainly not a person you used to be. And then they wanna steal your bright light. They want you pining for them. They want you thinking about them. They want you trapped in the narcissistic fog. They don't want you to escape that web of manipulation. However, there are people that break through it. There are people that figure it out and there are people that heal over a long period of time. There are people that put a mountain of work into themselves and that they rise through the ashes like a phoenix and they understand they are the priority. They come first, second, and third. These are the people, these are the people that needed to get the answers. Because remember, the narcissist won't give you closure. They know that. They want everything to be, to, they want the relationship to end with a thud, a crash, a bang on their terms, not on your terms. And in their feeble, tiny little pea brain, what they will say is, yep, I got this one. How many is that now during my life? Oh, that's six people I've destroyed? Wow, I'm only X number of years old. At this rate, I could probably do about 24 people. I could probably really crush people. And that's, those numbers are very light, by the way. Having said all these things, the narcissist wanted to turn you into them. They really did. And for a period of time, perhaps you did experience reactive abuse. You did turn into a not, in, not kind, loving individual for a period of time. The reason why is because you were forced. Your hand was forced. Something had to give in that relationship. Either the narcissist would turn good, which is never going to happen, meaning they would start giving you authenticity and genuineness and love and all that, but they can't give any of that because that's they don't possess those traits. Or B, you would get so beaten down and worn down, your your physical health was taking a hit, your your credit card debt up your eyeballs, etc., and relationships were blowing up left and right because the narcissist was driving wedges between you and everybody. That's when you stood up for yourself, and that's when the discard happened. That's an example. The point being, the narcissist does want to turn you into them. They want you being down in the low vibrational quagmire state where they live and they exist. They never want you existing on a high vibrational state where, which is natural for you. They try to take you down and they did for a period of time but ultimately you rose as high up as you possibly can and that's where you belong. That's where you will always be once you get the wisdom. So guys, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, stay true, stay blessed, continue to become awakened and aware and understand you are the priority. You come first, second, and third. Yes, the narcissist tried to turn you into them. Believe me when I tell you they did. Second thing, there is a massive energy exchange between negative and positive energy. You had the positive and you have the positive energy. The narcissist is nothing but a bottomless pit, a cesspool of darkness, if you will. And the third thing is, no matter where you are on the planet, remember, you are not alone. You are not alone. God bless you. I love you all. God bless you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a great day. Love you guys. Bye.